What's up guys, it's TechnoViking23 coming to you today with a little trip down memory lane. We are playing some Castlevania Symphony of the Night, a game I have not played in a very long time and a game that I have actually been looking for forever. What actually got me back into this game was seeing the recent update uh, that they've done to ActRaiser, uh, I think they're calling it Renaissance, that they're coming out with now for the PC and other platforms. Uh, ActRaiser was a Super Nintendo game that I absolutely loved, so I was really excited when I saw that. When I was looking through it, it kind of reminded me of Castlevania Symphony of the Night, and I was like, man, you know, I really wish they would remake this game, uh, not touch anything with it except for updating the graphics, uh, because this game was like one of my favorite games of all time. It's actually in my top five. Uh, I think this is like almost the most perfect game uh, that you can get, especially if you're into the whole uh, Castlevania and Metroid uh, type of game. So uh, everything about this game is just awesome. The equipment system, uh, the movement system, the platforming, the music is amazing. The boss fights are all pretty cool. Uh, like I said, the music, the soundtrack to this game throughout is just absolutely incredible. It's an amazing entry in the Castlevania series, and I'm so glad that I was actually able to find it once again on the Xbox Store. Uh, I actually had been looking for it for a while, and then someone actually mentioned to me that the game is out now on Android. You can actually get it on your phone. So the first thing I did was I went on and tried to find it. I was kind of confused. I'm like, why would they make this a mobile game? Because there's really no microtransactions. There's no way they would be making money off of it. But I found out it was just like a $3 download uh, from the Google Store. So I went and actually downloaded it on Bluestacks. But then unfortunately, I found out that this game uh, doesn't really have controller support through Bluestacks. You, you can use a controller with Bluestacks, but for this game, for some reason, it doesn't interact with it very well. Uh, and there have not been any fixes for it as of yet. I've seen a couple of complaints on the Bluestacks Reddit about the issue. Uh, but I really wanted to play it on Bluestacks so I could blow it up on the monitor and uh, play with the controller and record some game footage from it. Because this, like I said, was one of my favorite games ever made. Uh, but thankfully I was able to find it. I think it was on rotation in the Xbox Arcade. Uh, it's actually made for Xbox 360, but thankfully you can play it up on the Xbox One. Uh, so that's what I'm doing here. The only problem is it does give you the smaller screen. Uh, you can't blow the screen up as far as I know. Maybe you can. I just haven't found that option uh, just yet. Well, I started playing it and man, just it brought back so many memories. So I'll probably be playing through this game again. Just having a good time with it. Uh, this originally, I believe, came out on the PlayStation 1 a long time ago. I first found this game when I was in college back in like 2001. And I think we were at the mall, and uh, it's back when they used to have those like used game stores at the mall, and you could just go in and browse all the cool old games. And they had this on a CD-ROM for like $19.99 at the time. So I think it's actually worth more now than it was back then. Uh, just given the status that it's now like a classic, basically. And it was such a good game, well-designed game. And uh, I picked it up then, and I've really loved the game ever since. Just tons of hours of playtime through this game. Uh, it's really cool because it, you start off in the main castle uh, trying to go after Dracula. You play as Alucard, Dracula's son, uh, who's been in a couple of the other uh, Castlevania games. I think he first appeared in Castlevania 3. Um, so that's way back, a long time ago, back on the NES. Uh, but you're trying to go through the castle and you're trying to destroy Dracula. Now the cool thing in this game, which gave it a lot of replayability, was there are so many different weapons you can get. There's all kinds of shields, swords, daggers. Um, you can get a sword that allows you to like teleport across the screen. Uh, there's like all kinds of different costume pieces you can get, like capes and things. You get all kinds of cool abilities. You can transform into a bat and fly around. You can transform into mist and go through these grates to find secret areas. Uh, you can even transform into a wolf to make these really long jumps and move really fast. Uh, there's all these magic spells you can eventually learn as you uh, progress through the game. So it's got a lot of stuff that's really, really cool about it. And of course, the old kind of old school platform feel to it. Now, this really takes me back because one of my favorite games of all time is Super Metroid. And of course, I had grown up on the NES. I grew up with this, the Metroid games and the Castlevania games. Actually, the first Castlevania I played was Castlevania 2 Simon's Quest, which is a game that a lot of people didn't really like, but I actually really, really enjoyed it. And uh, then I found uh, Super Metroid when it came out for the Super Nintendo, and that is one of my favorite games of all time. I've wanted to do a playthrough of that game forever uh, on YouTube, but unfortunately, Nintendo copyright claims just about anything you make with their games in it, uh, regardless of whether or not you monetize it. So I just don't want to give them free money because I really don't agree with a lot of their practices as a company lately. So I have kind of refrained from doing that, but eventually someday I may fire up the Super Nintendo 
and actually finally do that Metroid playthrough because it's one of my favorite games. I really would love to show some content with it. Uh, but for unfortunate reasons, I just have not been able to uh, yet. So when I actually eventually first started playing this game, it was basically a combination of two of my favorite franchises. Um, it really had a lot of the elements from Super Metroid in it, and then just being able to collect all the weapons and items and things, and all the different spells and everything, just made for a really enjoyable uh, gameplay experience. And then, of course, as I mentioned earlier in the video, the soundtrack to this game is absolutely incredible. Uh, it changes depending on what type of area you are in the castle. Uh, it changes kind of based on the mood of each area you're in, the setting. So the boss battles have kind of like this fun, chaotic theme. And then you get a different theme uh, for each area of the castle that you're... Uh, exploring and going through so it's pretty cool then the neat thing too is once you reach the what you think is the final boss and you actually do beat it you actually get the upside down reverse castle the castle basically reverses itself and you have to then go upward through it upside down to reach the final version of dracula uh, to beat the game so once you finish it you're actually not quite done yet there's a lot of replayability there so it's pretty cool and of course you can you know find certain areas where you could just farm enemies all day if you want to try to raise up your level I remember uh, when the game first starts, you can kind of sit in the first area and farm a bunch of the mermen that jump out of the water and just, you know, begin a bunch of levels while you still have some of the good gear, like the Alucard sword and everything. Because that's also kind of the funny thing. They give you all the best items in the game when you first start. Because it's like Alucard is coming to the castle to stop Dracula. He's got all of his equipment. He's all well-armed and everything. And then you meet Death at the first door, and he basically takes away all your gear, and you're reduced to basically just using your fist for a few minutes until you can find... Uh, some weapons off the first couple of skeletons. Uh, one of them will eventually drop you a short sword that you can use and you'll wind up using for a little bit until you find better weapons. Uh, as you go through the game and you beat some of the bosses and go through certain areas, it's just like Super Metroid where you find uh, more items and the items will drop. You'll get better weapons, better equipment and uh, items that like allow the candles to drop hearts. There's uh, items that also show like what type of enemy you're fighting. Uh, you can get their strengths and weaknesses as you go through and experience more of those enemies in the game so it's just got so much depth to it and then of course the the equipment system uh it's worth playing through the game a few times just to experience all of the different weapons because you'll wind up finding weapons that are really cool and then eventually you, you will once you kind of start reaching toward the end you will again recover all of your like end game weapons that you start out off with before death takes them from you so just a really well designed game has a lot of replayability and it still looks good it still sounds good brings back a lot of good memories uh, like i said i would love to see them upgrade this kind of like they did with act razor give it some more updated graphics but really not touch anything else because the gameplay mechanics you know for me were just absolutely perfect so really enjoyed this game it was a lot of fun and uh, i don't know if i'll put any content with it up on the channel or not but i just thought it was neat that i was able to find it again and wanted to share that with you guys just because this is something that uh, I really do enjoy. It's a uh, game and a genre I really do miss. Uh, I've been waiting for a new Metroid game that's very similar to this for a long time, but it seems like every time uh, they want to release a Metroid game, it's, I don't know, it's just not what I'm looking for, or it's just for the Switch, or it's for a system that I don't want to play. And it's unfortunate Nintendo kind of has that exclusivity with the Metroid franchise, because it would be really nice uh, to see it offered on other platforms uh, that could do it justice. Uh, I just haven't really enjoyed what Nintendo's been doing lately, so... Uh, I do have a Nintendo Switch, but I honestly don't play it hardly at all, so... Uh, it's not really a system I enjoy uh, too much. I'd much rather play stuff on the PC or an actual console where I can play on the big screen, so that's kind of what I've been looking for, and that's uh, kind of what Castlevania Symphony of the Night is allowing me to scratch that itch once again. So, really cool and really excited to be playing this game again, and I might share some more content with you guys. Um, so let me know down below. Are you guys a fan of the series? Are you a fan of Castlevania or Metroid? Uh, this genre is probably going to appeal to some of the older fans. But uh, yeah, let me know what you guys think. As always, I uh, hope you guys are having a great day. Thanks as always for watching. And I will see you again next time.